Let's take a toast to UFC 119 Mir vs. Krokop. Yep. Originally, they were going to have Frank Mir in his uh, rematch with Big Nog, uh, Rajiro Noguera, uh, Antonio. Uh, well, Minotaro Noguera, Big Nog. And uh, that was scrapped due to injury, so. Uh, he is replaced now with the Croatian Mirko, with the le legendary Croatian Mirko Krokop. Should be quite a good night. That is tomorrow, September 25th, at uh, the, Consenco, the Conseco Fieldhouse, Indianapolis, Indiana. We also got some really exciting sounding matchups. Uh, let's find out whether uh, if the event's going to live, live up to the hype. I'm going to be there to check it out. So here's what I predict. Let, let's start from the top. Frank Mir against Mirko Krokop. And his last, one of these guys is coming off a win, one of these guys is coming off a loss. Frank Mir is, at um, UFC 111 got just smashed and obliterated by former interim title holder Shane Carwin with a series of uppercuts. Before that, he quickly disposed of and guillotine choked Czech Congo first round also and before that he lost to Brock Lesnar in which Lesnar had him up against the fence pounded him out to, to until uh, he wouldn't move anymore this is a interesting situation Mirko Krokop is coming off a surprising submission victory over Pat Berry in a victory which is kind of sketchy because Pat Berry himself I picked Barry to win that fight just because it seems like the Crow Cop's best days, you know, back in 2006 when he won the Pride Grand Prix by knocking out Vanderlei Silva. Uh, he also beat the likes of Mark Coleman and uh, Sakuraba back then too when he was smashing a lot of people. Uh, I picked Pat Barry to win, and Pat Barry just, just happened to be. Uh, well, he, he just happened happens to be a fan of Mirko Krokop, so maybe Barry accidentally gave him his back and Krokop accidentally took it, no, or choked him out and then he was like, tap, so. Anyways, is Krokop going to be able to do that to Frank Mir? No, absolutely not. Frank Mir in this fight is going to be the bigger fighter, he's going to be more motivated and slightly more cocky, I assume, because that's how Frank Mir kind of is, you know. That kind of stuff. But um, I am going to pick Mir in this fight. I predict he's going to want to keep it on his feet to prove the naysayers wrong. But uh, even though uh, Krokop has also beat Anthony Perros back in Australia, uh, UFC 110, and um, in a victory that wasn't really that impressive, but he also beat Mustafa Al Turk again in kind of a, a victory. But uh, Krokop, I think, is going to be too flustered by the strength of Frank Mir, his jiu-jitsu, his power in his strikes that he's practicing. They showed uh, all the modifications that he's doing, and uh, Krokop is going to be slower, I imagine, in this fight, but if he can do it, that'll be great. You know, if Krokop can somehow beat Frank Mir, that'll really be something, but it's just, it's difficult to see it happening. So, uh, I pick a guy, I got Frank Mir winning by TKO in the early third round or a second round. Yeah, not not submission maybe, but he could do it. You know, Nogueira submitted Crow Cup. Uh, and for the next fight, we have the undefeated Ryan Bader back again after knocking out Keith Glassjaw Jar Jardine and taking on um, Noguera's little brother, Antonio Rajaro Noguera. This is um, also a important fight. I think the loser of this fight should get um, John Jones, you know. So, with Noguera, he showed up and kind of looked rusty against Jason Brills. That, that's who it was. Let me see. Yeah, Jason Brills, he, in which that was a fight of the night candidate. No one gave Brills a chance, including myself. 
and some people were thinking that maybe Burrell's gotten robbed because he had multiple submission attempts against Noguera and uh, made, made it, you know, just like that. Noguera's last loss was, of course, against Sokaju in 23 seconds. That was in 2007. But since then, he no one else has finished him yet. He's seven fight winning streak. So, and for Ryan Bader, he knocked out Keith Jardine. He won a decision over Eric Schaefer, and Carmela Morero is the uh, UFC Ultimate Fighter Season Eight Light Heavyweight winner. And. Uh, you know, he, he trains from the same camp that um, Velasquez is at and C.B. Dalloway. Oh, let me see. Hold on. Yeah, Darth, Darth Vader, that's his name, of course. Or Darth Vader. Right. Let me see. Yeah, also Aaron S uh, Simpson and Aaron, uh, Eric Larkin, uh, all of them train the same crew the same wrestling crew also. So, here's what I think is going to happen. I think Bader is going to come out and he's going to want to try, like, he's going to maybe first attempt to strike with Noguera, which he will probably fail at doing, and Noguera will catch him with something. Noguera, because uh, Bader looked like he gassed for a little bit against Keith Jordan before finishing him off. And I see Bader going for, like, takedown after takedown over and over again in this fight to eventually win a three-round unanimous decision, defeating Noguera, but again, I hope Noguera wins by submission or something, or I don't know. Okay, next one, we got Matt Serra, the last man to defeat GSP, against Chris Lytle. And this is a rematch, Matt Serra won a decision over Chris Lytle to win uh, the season, let me see, yeah, to also win another to win uh, the the welterweight to be the welterweight winner of, U of the Ultimate Fighter of season four, he's got you know decent. He's heavy-handed in his uh, in his right hand striking power, all that stuff. And one of his uh, last fights, he lost a decision to Matt Hughes, in which he came very close to finishing Matt Hughes with the power that he had. And after that, he quickly uh, sent. Frank Trigg into retirement at UFC 109. And Chris Lytle, an incredibly tough guy to finish. Uh, Matt Serra is not going to knock him out, and I don't think he's going to submit him, and I don't see Chris Lytle submitting Matt Serra either. So again, I've got Matt Serra taking Chris Lytle down or pulling guard and attempting submissions out, out, with them going nowhere, with Matt Serra just mostly trying... To when when Matt Serra is unable to submit Chris Lytle, he will end it. He will win points with strikes, etc., etc. And next we got um, a fight I'm really interested in looking forward to seeing: the, uh, Sean Shirk taking on the undefeated Evan Dunham. Evan Dunham is a uh, just beat Tyson Griffin by decision, of course. He also nearly broke Efren Escudero's arm, and Efren Escudero himself just got choked out by. Uh, lightweight, no, like, um, yeah, lightweight standout, uh, Charles Oliveira. And he's taking on Sean Shirk, who has not fought since losing, since his kind of sloppy performance against now the reigning champion, Frankie Edgar, in which Sean Shirk went out there and tried to box with a guy he shouldn't be trying to box with. Sean Shirk really shouldn't be trying to box that much to begin with, since he's mostly a wrestler. In this one, I see Shirk maybe trying to box with Evan Dunham at first, but that's not going to work because Evan Dunham could very easily one day fight for the lightweight title. Um, Evan Dunham is a very uh, unpredictable fighter, a very tough, durable guy who can who keeps making you think. You know, he surprises you with a lot of things. The way he is able to avoid submissions, like in his fight against... Um, uh, Maximus Mer Merlio? Let me see. Okay. Against Marcus Aurelio. Yeah. Once he beat him. And uh, uh, Evan Dunham's, uh, his striking is, is always looks great. Dev both Dunham and Bader happen to be 11-0 apiece 
Alright, well, we're close to approaching 10 minutes right now. But uh, let me see if I can get, get the rest of the card done. Okay, we got... Uh, so I'm gonna pick... Yeah, Evan Dunham to just take Shirk by surprise and just smash him for three rounds and win again a decision or a very dominant TKO. And next, Melvin Gillard against Jeremy Stevens. Melvin Gillard uh, just... He just crushed the body of Wayland, excuse me, Lowe with a knee. Wow. Someone edited this on Wikipedia. And he also won a decision over Hanis Torres. His last loss was against Nate Diaz. Melvin Gillard, if he, uh, if his head's in the game and he doesn't go out there and let himself get submitted, then I got him winning this fight by knockout, by beating Jeremy Stevens. But uh, Jeremy Stevens... Could surprise him with his some of his unorthodox strikes that he showed against against uh, what's his name Sam Stout back at UFC 113, and that's um, most of what I'm going to say about it. I also got CV Dalloway beating Joe uh, Dork Dorkson and Joey Beltran beating the Kimbo Slice Killer Matt Mitrione. All right, so that's all I got right now. Check it out, guys. MMA, it's going places.